Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. If you've seen any of my videos before, then I welcome you back. And if you're new here, I hope you find something you like and decide to stay a while. Welcome back for another one of my gun workshop videos. Today we'll be covering the original meta weapon, the OG go-to god gun of modern warfare, the M4A1. This weapon hails from the good old US of A and offers a very quick 4-6 to six shot kill on enemies in standard multiplayer. The rate of fire falls just short of the superior Ram 7 while offering the same damage model. Much like the MP7, this is, at least so far, a meta weapon I actually enjoy using, unlike the Grau 556. To find out why, simply keep watching the video. However, if you'll bear with me for a moment, I'd like to ask that if there is anything you like or don't like about this video, feel free to let me know in the comments. I look at them all and respond to them all, so don't be afraid to let your voice be heard. Also, suggest a gun for the next video. I really don't mind which one I do next. Now, with that out of the way, let's get to the nitty gritty of this weapon, starting off ritualistically with the close range build I use. For the close range build I offer, the Lightning, you'll see a familiar pattern when compared to other 556 assault rifles. I use the FSS 14.5 inch tack line barrel, which reduces range and bullet velocity while increasing ADS speed. I next remove the stock for better mobility. I throw on the stippled grip tape for good measure. I use the 50 round mags as a nice middle ground between the base mags and the 60 round mags, increasing my ammo capacity while keeping the mobility detriment negligible. And I round things off with the operator foregrip to reduce recoil while not hurting mobility too much. The Lightning is intended to function as the namesake suggests. It appears quickly and briefly, allowing you to ADS very quickly, use the weapon's very high rate of fire to melt an enemy, and then turn to strike again elsewhere. Some of you out there may not be a fan of the snappy barrels since they reduce effective range. However, I do find them to be a nice middle ground between the base barrel and a stubby barrel. These typically aren't my preferred barrels to use, but since this is specifically for a close range build, I feel it is the best option available. The lack of a stock does cause a decently noticeable recoil increase since the nerf in June, but it still allows for the weapon to be very agile, something sorely needed in the CQC situations you'll be fighting in. The 50 round mags offer plenty of ammo to deal with multiple opponents without slowing you down too much. The operator foregrip helps to fight some of the negatives of the no stock attachment without sacrificing aiming strafe speed as you would with the merc foregrip. This build is best for standard multiplayer. Ground War is not an area I recommend using this build, and despite this basically being a stripped down purist variant you can find in Warzone, I don't really recommend this variant for that game mode either. For my long range build, I present to you the Thunderclap. This M4A1 build first utilizes the stock M16 Grenadier barrel to reduce recoil and increase range while slowing us down overall. Since this is for longer ranges, I also chose to use the Viper Reflex Optic, since I'm honestly not a fan of the M4's iron sights. I use the Forge Tac Close Quarters Stock to improve ADS time without increasing recoil as the no stock attachment would. Again, we have the 50 round mags for more lead to pump into your enemies. And the Ranger Foregrip helps our recoil control and aiming stability. The Thunderclap is a slight variation on what many would consider to be the best build to use in Warzone if you choose to run the M4. The Grenadier Barrel greatly reduces recoil and makes it so much easier to stay on target. It does slow down your movement speed a little bit, but this build isn't particularly geared towards rushing enemies or objectives. The Viper Optic is just my personal favorite. It zooms in ever so slightly as all reflex sights do and it just provides a much clearer sight picture than the M4's irons, which look way too clunky for me to use at range. The close quarter stock helps you to stay on target more easily and snap onto targets, even at farther distances. This does make you a tad less stable, but this isn't a precision rifle, so it shouldn't hurt too much in my opinion. The stippled grip basically doubles up on the stock's boosts. The 50 round mags could be swapped out for the 60 round mags if you're playing Warzone. I still feel like the extra 10 bullets aren't really worth that much more of a noticeable movement speed reduction, but it's up to you. The Ranger foregrip has come to be my favorite foregrip to use for longer range builds, mostly because it reduces recoil as well as stabilizes your aim. This build can be used in all game modes, but it excels at distance, so keep that in mind. The stock could be swapped out for attack laser if you prefer that, and the sight could be dropped for a suppressor in Warzone if you're one of those people who likes the iron sights on this weapon. 
It's honestly a very well-rounded build, and I can see why it was the initial meta for the game. And that'll about wrap up my coverage for the M4A1. I found this gun to be really fun to use. The lightning allowed me to clean up in many close quarters engagements, while still being able to challenge people out to medium range. The thunderclap really held its own at range, and it was a ton of fun to use. Definitely my preferred build for this weapon. I don't see why anyone would choose the Grau over this gun for Warzone, or anything really. But that's to be expected, as I know I'm in the minority when it comes to feelings about Switzerland's only AR in this game. The fire rate is great, damage is consistent to most other 556 rifles, and it handles very well. All around, this is a great gun. As much as it pains me to praise a meta weapon, it's really good. Now, before I go, I would like to announce that I will be doing a compilation video for all the guns in a given category, such as the assault rifles, once I finish covering them all. The compilation will just be of builds I find are the most fun for me to use personally, and I'd love to hear what you guys think of them when that comes out. Keep this in the back of your mind for later. I really hope you enjoyed the video. I really enjoyed putting it together for you. If any of you out there liked what you saw or heard, feel free to drop a like on this video. If you think any of your friends might like what I have to say, then feel free to share it with them, or anyone really. And lastly, if you want to hear more from me, and don't want to miss any of my uploads, you can subscribe by hitting that little button down below. By doing that, being sure to turn on those notifications, you'll never miss an upload from your new favorite YouTuber. As always, I wish you all a pleasant day, and I hope you have a great week coming up. This has been Doodleman149, and I will see you later.